Cohesion Indicators – A Challenge This video was shot during the interactive event, Evaluation – How Did It Go?, in Helsinki on the 30th and 31st of May 2017. The aim of the event was to discuss terms of reference and first findings of impact and operational evaluations. In this video, a representative of the Interreg Northwest Europe program explains how they came up with the indicators for measuring cohesion and which approach to it they developed. The goal of this presentation is to make us step back a little bit from our daily worries and daily operational aspects and actually remind ourselves in which context we are working. Um, right. We're good? Yes. Yeah. Um, yes, a challenging task um, uh, for me and also the evaluation task force of our um, uh, program to come up with cohesion indicators. Um, now, we are very busy delivering our priority access, our um, specific objectives, looking into our indicators where we are in our performance frameworks etc but we somehow tend to forget that yes we do work in the context of a greater policy a policy that is about solidarity sense of belonging and reduction disparities uh, diminishing the urban rural divide etc so um, the goal of this presentation is to refer you back to the roots a little bit and as I said take a step back from what we focus on on a daily basis. What makes us different from the H2020 program for example is that we we are not very much about excellence we want our territory to, uh, territories to develop but we what matters to us is that it matters it happens on our territories we have to prove the impact and the net change that we deliver um, in Northwest Europe, in any other program territory, not necessarily in the entire uh, EU, like the the H 2020. So the where, the where of where the change happens, is uh, important to us. Uh, our MC uh, spent a fair deal of time uh, discussing what the actual priorities of the program are. I don't know whether this happens to, um, to you as well, whether you have similar levels of, uh, of uh, discussion, but in our case, um, there are two aspects usually raised. So what is our program about? Is it about the measured uh, aspects such as jobs, growth, be, be it economic or social? Are we about GEG emission only? Are we about waste uh, uh, the material reduction? Or are are we supposed to bring those systemic changes on the territory using um, the job and growth creation and hence having an impact <coughs> on the territory? So in order to tackle both of those aspects, which, are, which go in the same direction but still you know, which vary, uh, we wanted to come up with um, additional indicator framework that would basically establish a link between what we already have as output indicators in the system, and um, a measurement framework for the cohesion. This actually means that we have to come up with this framework in the first place. So um, I'll move on a little bit. Um, we've basically uh, spoken to our experts, our evaluators, um, whether this is um, a task that they could possibly undertake, knowing that our national law actually al allows it. We have a framework contract with a consortium for three tasks. As I said two-step evaluation, mm -hmm. operational and impact evaluation. But this additional task came up. We thought it would be very useful to tackle it also as a contribution to the impact evaluation. Okay, It would give us some more narrative, some more background knowledge um, to establish uh, our impact, be it envisaged or not envisaged. So after several discussions in the MC and then the evaluation uh, task force, we decided to create this extra task, task four, through the framework contract. Uh, of course, the question was, how do we do it in practice? Thank God it turns out that under the French law, you can have a subsequent contract to a framework. 
which basically means you add a task, you extend the budget a little bit. Uh, uh, we knew that the person who is actually involved in our consortium could be the only person to deliver this type of job, knowing that it is an experiment. Um, and this particular consultant told us that we could basically look at um, three approaches. Two of them focusing on data analysis and analysis of indicators that already exist in the EU. Um, one of them was tackled by the Interco project. It's an ESPON funded project that basically grouped approximately 600 indicators, all existing indicators used by um, the, uh, let's say the European sources, uh, and grouped them under the dimensions of cohesion, which I will look into um, a bit later on. Similar exercise was undertaken by a professor who is crazy about cohesion called Professor Medeiros is apparently Portuguese and often deals and works with ESPON. So Professor Medeiros was not at all involved in the Interco um, project, but still was very interested in, in finding or bridging the gap between policy and the existing indicator frameworks. Um, the evaluators told us that they could actually come up with a model that is based on um, those existing uh, indicator sets mm -hmm. and the contribution to impact model weaving in the projects and what they bring into the territory um, into the cohesion and uh, existing uh, indicator frameworks. Uh, now, those existing indicators from the list of 600 would be called the context indicators, so from those, those lists that, um, list that already exist. And then we would look into the project contributions, into the cohesion dimensions, which are most interesting to, for our MC members, namely competitiveness and balance developments. And these would serve later as the so-called storylines for impact evaluation. The cohesion dimensions as such were outlined by the consultants as competitiveness, balance development, local development, the geographical aspects and policy aspects. Very, very broad. Our MC members said that they would, first of all, be interested in competitiveness, but also balanced development. The challenge, of course, is huge because we have to create clear links between what is defined in the cooperation program. We have three priorities. Innovation, low carbon, resource efficiency. Then we have those territorial cohesion dimensions. And we have nothing in between, meaning there is no intermediary level that Simon would refer to as strategic areas of interest. And those strategic areas of interest for us are, for example, um, uh, networks, okay? The cooperation, all the cooperation aspects. F from our program perspective, we have defined those specific areas of interest as innovation capacity, joint, joint governance, and networks as a starting point of the whole uh, exercise, because this is just the beginning. Now, just to present you the whole idea in a, some kind of graph, so that you know how, how it's going to work. At the very bottom, we have the three priorities of the program, okay? At the very top, we have the storylines, so those three dimensions that our MC focused on. And in the middle, we have what I like to call ETC variables or some kind of cohesion enablers that we bring with our programs to actually create the bridge between the two. So this is currently what we're looking at. It's an early example. We have basically written a terms of reference for this and we're currently at the stage of re receiving an offer from our contractors. But it is quite an experiment. God knows what comes out of it. I'll keep you posted, I think, <laughs> with time. <laughs> Maybe if we have a, another seminar uh, dedicated to it. But I thought it would be very interesting to, to show that we're trying to go a little bit beyond what's expected of us in terms of proving our performance, in terms of our results, etc., and finding a really deep and complex narrative to what program delivers and how it delivers and the, the benefits that it actually brings um, 
to the territory as such. This is where we are at uh, also now. We're currently attributing our indicators to those that are in this big uh, context group. Uh, we're looking whether anything is missing. We're also wondering how to monitor the whole thing because we need project contribution. Project, basically, projects would need to report on those additional indicators, but we can't really put additional administrative burden on beneficiaries. They already have enough in terms of reporting and claims, and that's it's largely enough for them. So we're wondering if we require this kind of information, knowing that we have a structured approach, hoping by then, um, we'll probably ask for this information in the final project report. Um, and we're actually thinking that these kind of criteria or contribution of projects to those ETC variables should have been taken into consideration in the pre-selection. Um, so, voila. Um, what we're going to get out of it as uh, deliverables, we're hope hoping to get some maps with, um, like Aspen maps with... Um, I was just looking at you and I was thinking, I did talk to you about this, didn't I? But yeah, so hopefully some maps <laughs> um, showing how the, the program has contributed to the developments on the territory. And then we'll hopefully have really good storylines, you know, for projects um, supported by case studies. But we, we're still not sure how it's going to work out and whether the outcome will be satisfactory, but at least we're trying. It will hopefully help uh, in the debates for the next programming period, although it might be too late, because I have a feeling that the f uh, decisions about the future interreg, if we continue to exist, will be based on the previous programming period and the results of the 2007-2013. If you'd like to see more details about the evaluation of interreg programs and projects, please check out the different models Interact produced. In each of the models, you will find various materials such as videos, guidance papers, Q&A documents, links and other details.